If this world is going forwards, it's because of people like people who can think out of the box. Karl Popper was a great thinker in London in the 50s. Once said, knowledge advances not by repeating known things, but by refuting false dogmas. One of the dogmas in medicine is, for every ill there is a pill, which is not true. So I, I always demolished this myth about 40 years ago and wrote a book, What Doctors Don't Get to Study in Medical School. After I wrote their book, they wanted to defranchise me, remove my degrees and all. So people wrote to the MCI, remove his degrees, remove his uh, professorship, because he has written something very, against, very much against the medicine. No. I wrote, there is no pill for every ill, but there is a ill following every pill. <laughs> like for example, you take anything to bring down your blood sugar artificially with chemicals. That has lot of side effects. And most of the actually diabetic problems, many of them are due to the drug side effects rather than the diabetes itself. And diabetes should be controlled naturally. And that's exactly what my good friend, the handsome young man, Pramod has done. Along with his beautiful and handsome wife. I wish them Godspeed, good luck, long life to take this knowledge forwards. Let me tell you something. It was, I think, uh, Shoemaker who said, if you take a problem to a specialist, he'll complicate it further. It takes a genius with lot of courage to reverse it and simplify it. And courage is very important because, you know, when I first said that heart disease is not uh, to be treated by bypass surgery and angioplasty, people wanted to kill me. Recently I had a small stroke and a lot of my friends thought I shouldn't recover because they, they said he's a nuisance, to, he doesn't allow us to do our business. Actually medicine is not a business, medicine is a passion. Medicine is a passion so you have to do it because you are committed to doing it. And many of us in India do not think with the Indian mind at all because we don't have an Indian mind. And uh, luckily, Pramod yet has not become a true RNI. RNI is resident non-Indian. We live in India, but think in America. Pramod thinks like an Indian. And I hope he'll continue to think like an Indian. And Pramod showed for the first time that diabetes can be controlled without drugs and without any effort from the doctor. Actually, that is how it should be. When I first started the treatment for heart disease without any treatment, I mean drugs, people laughed at me. But now they, they come to me, especially doctors come to me because when they get ill, when they get a heart attack, they don't want the usual treatment that they give to others. And some of them don't want me to let them, let the world know that they have come to me. They come quietly, secretly and then take the treatment and go away. This is, this is nature. Now, if today medicine has gone one step further, it is because of Pramod's effort to say that diabetes can be controlled naturally. The conventional thinking is diabetes, the minute you have diabetes, you must immediately go and have either insulin or some other tablet. And that's why the West always hypes that. I think it was Sindeji who was talking about Nobel Prize and all. Nobel Prize is given only if there is business in whatever you find out. Like for example, Banting at best found out insulin. Immediately they get the Nobel Prize and they, everything happens. But insulin is the one which has probably done more damage than diabetes itself. It is hyperinsulinemia that does all the damage because insulin is a growth hormone. So whether you produce endogenous or exogenous hyperinsulinemia, you get all the vascular complications, eyes, kidneys, heart, lung, everything is damaged. Your legs, everything is damaged. But before the insulin level goes up too much, you are okay. And that is where Western medicine has gone astray. Western medicine has gone after the wrong science of reductionism. That is, you know, supposing somebody was talking about cancer, you would be surprised. We know what cancer is, but we don't know how to cure cancer. And but we still give treatment which we know doesn't work chemotherapy and lot of things and we know it doesn't work 
but we still give it because it's a big business. You will be surprised to know that cancer business in America is 2.5 trillion dollar business. So we want it to be perpetuated. Now we know 75 percent of the cancers are due either due to tobacco or due to alcohol. But no government in the world, nowhere, has come forward to ban tobacco and alcohol because they are the ones they get them the lot of tax and the governments run on tax and the tax money comes from tobacco and alcohol to a great extent. So we want cancer but we don't want cancer to go because cancer is a business. Supposing cancer business goes away, cancer disappears, you will be surprised. Industries will close, quite a lot of industries will close. Similarly, if diabetes goes away, thanks to the efforts of Pramod, lot of industry suffers. You imagine the industry, insulin industry is a big industry. Now insulin pen, insulin this, insulin that, continuous insulin, what have you. It's a multi-million dollar industry. All this will have to close because diabetes is a simple disease, it's not a disease, it's a metabolic change. Diabetes is not a disease of sugar, sugar is only an indicator. Diabetes is a disease of liver where metabolism is completely upset. And so you have got to look after the whole human being and the whole human being includes the most important part of the human being is human mind. Where is the mind? Never mind. Even your doctor thinks your mind is in the brain. And that's why mental diseases are treated with chemical drugs which only affect the brain. Mind is not in the brain. Remember that. Mind is not in the brain. Mind is the consciousness. The whole human being is the mind. So if your mind is pleased, your diabetes is gone. If your mind is pleased, your heart disease is gone. If your mind is pleased, your cancer is gone. You hate somebody, your diabetes goes up. You hate somebody, you, cancer, you get a cancer. And you are very angry with someone and want to destroy somebody, you get ang hypertension and so many other diseases. Now right from the beginning of my medical studies, in the medical school I was thinking, how are we treating human body as a machine? Human body is not a machine. You are one cell to begin with when you are made in the mother's womb. And that one cell is divided into 120 trillion cells today in your body. A human body is a colony of 120 human cells which are human beings. Each one of them is capable of doing what, the, what a man does or a woman does. And then they love each other so much. Love one another so much they talk to each other. And if you hate someone which you are not supposed to do, then the cells get confused after some time. And then if you go on hating somebody, the cells get so confused that they say, why is this man doing that? Because I love everyone. Why is this man doing that? So the cells start hating each other, which is called autoimmune disease. You hear of some horrible diseases. These are all autoimmune diseases because the cells hate each other. So diabetes is also coming somewhere near there, not fully there, but somewhere near there. So the most important part is keep your mind tranquil, love the whole world and have a healthy mind. You know what a healthy mind is? A mind with enthusiasm to work. You want to work and enthusiasm is compassionate. You want to help somebody. And if you have these two qualities of head and heart, you probably become a human being. But our education system doesn't do that. Education system tries to give you a job and money. So uh, big IITs and all they say, how much does my student get salary next year. That's the yardstick. I tell them no. How many good human beings have you produced in this world? And that's the most important part of educational system. The education must aim at making healthy minds and not just wealthy careers. If we did that, lot of more promotes will come out. Today you make a doctor, he wants to be a specialist and the next day he wants to drive a Audi car or a Mercedes-Benz car and he just wants to get a gadget and put angiogram for everybody. Whoever comes to the hospital is an angiogram. And the atrocities that happen in corporate hospitals are only to be seen to be believed. Doctors are induced to do more work so they are overdoing, over, over investigation, over diagnosis, over treatment. And this is accepted fact. A recent study which is published last week showed that 2,500 American doctors were interviewed and they said 50% of what they do is not for the patient's benefit but for their benefit. 50% of angioplasties and bypass surgeries are done for the doctor's benefit, the hospital benefit, not for the patient's benefit. 
and when you publish this data and try to do good to people people don't like you 